Hey, what is going on guys? Beautiful sunny day out here in Fort Collins, Colorado. We're near Edora Park right now. If you are familiar with the area, uh, the Epic Center is like right up there on the hill there. Seems like a great place to you know set up camp, do a review. Got a beautiful bike to go along with the beautiful day. This is the Gazelle Ultimate C8 HMB. If that name sounds familiar or if this bike looks a little bit familiar, well that's because Gazelle has I, I think four different versions of the Ultimate line. We've covered the other three already. So there's the Ultimate T10 and T10 Plus. Both of those have derailleurs, 10 speed uh, derailleur systems on there. And then the Ultimate C380, which we did about a week ago, that one's got a internally geared hub in the rear wheel. But instead of what we've got here, this is a Shimano Nexus, an eight speed internally geared hub. The Ultimate C380 has an Enviolo internally geared. It's like a, a CVT is what it's called, continuously variable transmission. So a little bit different than this one, quite a bit heavier too. This bike actually comes in at about 54 pounds. That's what I weighed this at, 53.8 pounds compared to about 63 for the Ultimate C380. A little bit lighter weight, a little bit different components on here. I'm gonna talk about some of those different changes on here as we go through the bike. The biggest difference to note between this one and the C380 is that this one costs $500 less. So save a bit of money. It's not quite as high quality components if you're looking more for like trekking use. This one though is a great fit for more like city commuting, that kind of stuff. Really all of the ultimate bikes are fantastic choices if you're doing some city commuting with the T10 Plus and the C380 being a little bit more geared towards like longer speed trekking if you wanted to kind of do a little bit of that. Honestly, I think the Ultimate line really is, it's kind of like a hybrid bike, right? It's a great city commuter and you can trick them out with uh, the Bosch range boost option if you wanted to. There's the bottle cage bosses right here. So if you wanted to get the range boost, then that uh, it does cost quite a bit extra. It's about a thousand bucks extra to get it all you know, set up and all the parts and everything, but they give you a bracket that mounts on here. You can get a Bosch Power Pack 500 battery on here. That'll double your range. And you know, so if you're doing some really long distance hauls, I mean, you could, you could get a long ways with that. We're, we're already talking about a range of anywhere from 30 to say 90 miles or so on these bikes because of the efficiency of the Bosch motor system. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we dive into it. But before we get into all the components and everything, let's just talk about the overall bike and Gazelle and why you might want to spend $3,500 on an e-bike when you can you can get e-bikes for a lot cheaper than that these days. There's a lot of direct-to-consumer companies and even some dealers that are priced quite a bit lower. Now with Gazelle though, you're, you're really getting a premium product. Gazelle's been making bikes for I think 127 years now. It's just fantastic expertise. They're based out of the Netherlands, which is a huge cycling country. I mean, it's, you know, everyone there is riding bikes for all kinds of stuff. So when you get on a bike like this, you can ride it without the electric assist on and immediately tell just the precision and the craft that Gazelle has for manufacturing really excellent bicycles. Especially here on the C8, because we've got the drive down here. The drive system is a belt drive, Gates carbon belt drive, instead of having you know a chain and a derailleur like you see on most bicycles. This is an awesome setup, honestly. It's This is one of the first bikes that Gazelle has brought over to the US to use a belt drive system. The other one being the C380 that we covered last week. Now it is just fantastic. These belts are are super strong and durable, a lot stronger than chains. They require a lot less maintenance. You know, you're not having to clean them out and apply more lubricant every so often like you do on a, a bicycle chain and derailleur system. A lot easier to maintain. We got this aluminum alloy guard on the top here and there's even a kind of like an extra guard on the outside of the ring here just to kind of help to protect that. You're looking at 55 teeth up front and then this is a 26 tooth cog in the back and eight speeds to shift through in that internally geared hub. So nice range. It's the equivalent of an 11 to 36 tooth cassette and derailleur system. So that's a pretty solid range though. You'll be able to tackle some good hills and get going to the top speed of 20 miles per hour on this, no problem. Uh, coming back to just talking a little bit about Gazelle, one of the perks from buying from them is that they've got dealers all over the country, really all over the world. But if you're here in North America, plenty of dealers to choose from so you can take advantage of their great service and warranty. You're looking at a two-year comprehensive warranty, and then you get a five-year warranty on the suspension fork, and then 10 years on the frame. 
that's awesome. That's one of the best out there. And they make really good frames, I mean, really good bikes in general, but they do a lot of extra testing. Since they're in the Netherlands, there's a lot of, uh, it rains a lot there. There's a lot of salt and stuff like that if you live near the coast. So they do all kinds of testing on these bikes to make sure that they're you know, really weather resistant, really durable. They're not gonna have the colors be getting all, all faded and components getting damaged from riding in harsh weather environments. So really fantastic job that they do with these and it's fully tricked out too. Feature complete, and not just feature complete, but I mean e-bike feature complete, right? These tires here, the Schwalbe Energizer Plus, this is the new version of these Energizer Plus tires. These are already e-bike specific tires that are rated up to 50 kilometers per hour, so they can handle the higher speeds. They've got this new Addix E, it's a new rubber compound from Schwalbe that's supposed to be a lot tougher, more puncture resistant, and better grip on it too, also designed specifically for e-bikes. You've got the fenders, aluminum alloy full coverage fenders mounted really well too they've got you know the support back here it also kind of hooks into the rack keep them nice and sturdy almost no rattle we'll ride around on some of the bumpy grass here so you can see very smooth and quiet especially you know since there's no derailleur down here to rattle around either you get the fender on the front up there as well. You get lights in the front and rear. I love the lights on these things, the Axis Blue Line. These are 50 lux lights, super bright. Here, we'll fire this up here so you can see it. So they've got the, the side cutouts here, so it shines to the side, you get good side visibility. Not to mention that you've got this sidewall striping on the tires here, very, very visible from the side. The Actually, the, even the rear light, as you can see, very visible from the side there. And 50 Lux is quite bright. Does a really great job. Got a bonus reflector on there. It's adjustable for angle, mounted high and center, so it turns when you steer. That makes it a lot easier to see where you're going, right? Some, uh, some bikes will have it mounted maybe like on the, the frame here, on a basket, so it doesn't turn when you steer. That can make it a little bit tricky going around corners at night. The rear light here, really great positioning on this. Four LEDs, super visible. It's low down here so it's you know nice and protected you got an extra reflector so they really did an awesome job with those integrated lights on here they're on by default when you power on the bike but you can turn them off if you want to just hold down the plus on there the little light indicator goes away and they'll turn off but you really should just leave those on really great for safety and these are pretty efficient lights they're not going to drain the whole bunch of battery power now this is a full suspension setup, a, a pretty basic one, but you know, technically full suspension. We do have it in the front and in the rear. So on the back here, you've got this cleverly named postmodern suspension seat post. 40 millimeters of travel in here. It is adjustable. You have to take the seat post out and then there's, you can use a hex wrench and there's a little nut in the bottom so you can adjust the preload on that. Now, of course, you, you are gonna need some tools to do that. As you can see, we don't have any quick release for the seat post here uh, or on the rear tire or anything the rear wheel which you know I think is a good thing because it makes stuff harder to steal especially when you've got this suspension seat post really nice saddle those are a bit more high value you don't want someone just to yank that off at the bike rack but then uh, there, there is quick release on the front up here as you can see so I'm not sure what the logic is there because that's I mean that's a really nice wheel and uh, you know tire setup up there so I could see somebody stealing that so it'd be a good idea to have a cable lock if you have to lock it up outside maybe the idea is that if you need to load it into a car or something like that it's easy to pop this wheel off and get it loaded uh, but you know anyways uh, back to talking about the suspension here 40 millimeters of travel there in the back, and then you've got another 40 millimeters of travel in the monoshock suspension fork up here on the front. Now this one is not adjustable, but they seem to have it dialed in pretty well. Does fine, the suspension, or the fork itself is very aerodynamic, so you can see like super thin and then kind of flat on the, on the fork there. Helps it to be a little bit more aerodynamic. Now the suspension is, I think, perfectly good for most riders if you're riding more in city, sticking to pavement and that kind of a thing. If you're gonna be doing more riding off-road, you know, getting onto some, some light trails around town or I, I don't know, like gravel or something like that, not, it, it doesn't really work too great for that. Uh, you know, if you get it really dialed in for yourself, then that will help. I haven't adjusted the preload on here for myself, but even when you get it adjusted, you're still looking at only 40, mil 40 millimeters of travel for each. Decent amount of air in the tires too. These are big old 
28 inch uh, wheels on these. So that gives you a nice low attack angle for rolling over bumps and you know cracks in the road and stuff like that. And decent volume on here, uh, 28 by uh, 1.75, I think it is. If you've got any sensitivities, uh, like say, you know, maybe your wrists are a bit more sensitive, then you might want to look at getting like a, you know, you could get like a suspension stem or something like that, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think the one on they have on here is great. Super adjustable, right? You can go from, all the way from like negative 10 up to 60 degrees. You've got a nice big range that you can adjust that to kind of fit your riding style. The grips on here really help a lot actually as far as comfort is concerned. They're kind of a, it's, it's, a, it's a stitched faux leather, but they, they feel really nice, honestly. They feel pretty premium. They're pretty thick, well padded, so you don't feel a lot or really much of any vibration in the handlebars. So those definitely help out for the comfort side of things. And they lock too. They, they lock in there, so they're not gonna twist if you really bear down on them. The adjustability of the bike is definitely a selling point. Having that stem, you can get the handlebars positioned perfectly. The brakes are adjustable for reach. So if you have bigger or smaller hands, you can dial in the, the base position of those levers to fit a bit more comfortably on there. These are hydraulic disc brakes. Hydraulic means that the levers are much easier to actuate than on mechanical. You get an instant response time, whereas for mechanical brakes, there can be like a little bit of a delay, especially for the rear brake. So hydraulic, definitely the way to go. You've got a 180 millimeter rotor up front there and then 160 in the back. I think that's a great setup. You have, you, your stopping power is concentrated more up front, so it makes sense to have the bigger one, 180 millimeter up there. Dual piston calipers on these, you're more than sufficient for doing city riding. This is one area of difference between this bike, the Ultimate C8, and the sort of the sister version, the Ultimate C380. That one's actually got quad piston calipers on there, just absolutely massive. You typically only see those on, you know, like downhill mountain bikes and that kind of a thing. A little bit overkill in my opinion. This feels like the perfect amount for what you're gonna be using this bike for. All right, let's see here. We can talk about the electrical system here. Bosch Active Line Plus. I've ridden quite a few bikes with this, and honestly, it's one of my favorites, and that's because I'm a little bit more of an active rider. I like having the motor every now and then to help out, but you know, in Fort Collins, we don't, we have some hills, but nothing too crazy, so I can just, you know, use a little bit of boost every now and then. And it, it feels really nice and smooth if you're riding without any electrical assist. With the later lines of the Bosch Active Line Plus, you know, this is the newest one, of course, they, they, they don't have the drag that uh, some of the older Bosch systems did. Some of the older ones would have, uh, instead of having you know, the big chain ring on here, they would have a much smaller one of, I think it was only 12 teeth or so, and then they had a, kind of this reduction gearing system to make it all work. The end result of that old system was that you had some drag if you were riding without assist or past the point of the motor's top assist level. So that problem's all gone, super smooth, without using any electric assist, and very quiet when you're using the motor too. When, even if you crank it all the way up to turbo, pretty difficult to hear it when you're riding. And a lot of people may not even realize that you're on an e-bike unless they, you know, if they see it from the side here and can see the big motor, then, eh, you know, that does kind of give it away. 7.1 pounds on the Active Line Plus here. One of the downsides of the Active Line Plus, in my opinion, is that it doesn't support a very high cadence. It only goes up to about 105 RPM. And then if you're pedaling faster than that, the motor is not going to be able to help you out anymore. And so, the, the, that can be a downside if you are somebody who likes to cycle at a higher cadence when you're pedaling. Um, if you've got like a knee injury or something like that, you might keep it shifted, you know, down lower, pedaling at a higher cadence so it's easier on your knees. You're not putting as much pressure in there. This motor is not the best fit for that. You'd be able to outpace it pretty easily if you're riding at those higher cadences. So if you like riding a little bit lower, like doing a little bit more work and exercise, and then you know, just want some motor to help you get farther and faster, that's when this uh, system really shines here. Battery is right there mounted in the down tube. This is the Power Tube 500. It has 482 watt hours of capacity, you know, close enough to 500, which is why they call it that. You can power on the bike with the power button right here, and then this is the key to remove it. Now, if we want to get the, the battery out, uh, we're gonna have to uh, get the cafe lock locked up here. All right, so let's get the uh, battery removed here. So kind of a 
multi-step process here. So you gotta turn the key to get it lifted out part way. And there's a little uh, like button in here that you, it's actually kind of difficult to do with gloves, but you gotta press that and then you can pop it out all the way. Now this is, that little two-step thing is designed for when the battery is mounted on the underside so it doesn't just fall out on you. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with having it up here. Just one extra step to get it removed. You're looking at 6.9 pounds on these batteries, you know, with the, the plastic shell on there and everything. So really not too bad. Bosch makes excellent batteries. I mean, their their electrical drive system is one of the best out there, in my opinion. Uh, there's the charging port on there for if you're wanting to charge it while it's removed from the bike. Now, for getting it uh, mounted back in here, got to get uh, the base lined up first. Now, it is a little bit annoying that you can't just like pop it straight back in and just, you know, press it in there. It's, uh, it's not like curved or angled or anything. So you've got to turn it here and then it'll set back in there. And then once you get to that point, then you can press it in and this kind of locks right in there. It doesn't, it doesn't really make an audible click uh, for the, the final stage of it. But I mean, it's, it's very clearly securely mounted, especially since it has that two step and everything. So you can feel good about having it in there. And then the key has to stay in this cafe lock while you're riding the bike. If you haven't used a, a cafe lock before, this is the AXA Defender. What it does, it just puts the little bar through the rear wheel there. The idea of, with this is that you can just, you know, stop it and run in somewhere real quick if you're just picking something up quick at the store without having to fully lock the bike. Someone can't just jump on it and ride away. You know, they could carry it, but it's, you know, it's 55 pounds. So that's, that's kind of tough if you have to go very far. I still feel kind of nervous leaving it with just that. You know, somebody could throw it in a truck or something, but it's a nice extra thing, right? These are really a pain in the butt to get off of here because of how they're kind of built into the frame and everything. So it's, you know, one extra deterrent. You've got a really high value bike here. You don't want somebody, you know, stealing it. So you can turn the key and it will release the cafe lock. You do have to leave this in here while you're riding kind of a downside in my opinion because if you have your key on your keychain then you have to leave your whole keychain in there and it's rattling around if you don't have it on your keychain it's easy to you know forget it in there and then somebody could very easily steal your bike so you know just get used to leaving it in there and taking it out with you whenever you stop anywhere Moving back to the rear here, they've got the Ursus Mui adjustable kickstand, really solid kickstand, good placement back here on the rear of the frame. That way you're not gonna collide it with the cranks if you're moving the bike backwards. It makes it a lot easier to maneuver and also it's a it's good placement for balancing the weight if you've got a bunch of cargo or something on your rear rack back here. The rear rack, we've got to talk about this, it's a really solidly built rack. It's mounted super well, I like how they have it kind of connected into the fender there. And it's a little bit higher capacity than most racks. You get a maximum weight capacity of 27 kilograms, whereas the standard is 25. A little bit extra there that it comes out to about 60 pounds. Now it's, uh, the, the tubing on the outside is, has kind of a unique, almost like a, like a triangle sort of a shape to it. So it's not standard gauge out here, but it's not so big. Like, I think you'll still be able to hook stuff to it just fine. And it's got this uh, built-in bungee right here. You can just kind of pull off. So if you if you have something small with you, like your jacket or a, I don't know, a small, like a purse, small bag, something like that, you can just plop that on here, stretch the bungee over and hook it in. Really great if you're you know just carrying something small home with you. And if you need to move this off for any reason, this does detach. It just kind of snaps straight off there. But it's designed so that you can just leave it like that, put other stuff on top of it. They've got some extra hooks or I should say some extra mount points down here if you're putting pannier bags or something like that on there. Really solid job on the rack and of course the, the tail light integration is really well done. All of the integration on the bike is something that Gazelle really does an awesome job with. The cables all integrated. Uh, you can see the all the cabling up here running into the frame and it's such a sleek frame, right? They, they hydroform these which is how they get it to look so smooth where you, know, you can see the welds but they're, they're really smoothed out well. Really rigid too. For a step through bike, you often will get some frame flex. So you can, you know, when you get going fast, the front end will kind of feel like it's wobbling back and forth. Don't really feel that at all on here. We'll, you know, get into that when we 
uh, when we do the ride test portion. Back here you can see the sensors for the Bosch motor system. There's one mounted on the spoke here. There's the sensor for it. These motors are reading the rear wheel speed and your, your pedal cadence and your torque over a thousand measurements per second, which makes them incredibly responsive. Really a fantastic riding experience. If you've only ridden on cadence-based bikes before, then these are a real treat. Let's run through the control system here. Now it's a Bosch system, so if you've ever ridden a Bosch e-bike, you're already gonna know what's going on here. This is the Bosch Purion display. They've got a bunch of different displays. This is the most basic one. Easiest to use, uh, it doesn't have as many features as a lot of the other ones. You know, they've got, um, they've got like the, the Kiox and the Intuvia. There's one called the Nyon. that's mostly in Europe, but I think it's starting to come over to the US some. There's the smartphone hub. All kinds of stuff that you, you, if you wanted to upgrade to one of those displays, you could. It's a Bosch system, so a Gazelle dealer would be able to make that upgrade for you. Might be kind of difficult on here, just because most of them out in the center, and then that's going to kind of clash with the light. But honestly, I think you're fine just sticking with this one. It's solid, it gets the job done. Some of the features that you miss are like, there's no USB port for charging devices. There is a port right there, um, but it's for diagnostics only. So you can hit the power button on the top, fire that up and it just fires right up nice and quick. There's a walk mode button on the bottom if you need to move the bike forward at a slow pace. And then you can hit the plus and minus on here to change the assist all the way up to turbo. Then you can go down to sport, tour, eco, or off. If you're all the way up in turbo, you're looking at uh, 50 Newton meters of torque here. So that's solid for city riding. This isn't something you'd want to do any like you know extreme climbs with. But I mean, honestly, they do really well. I've ridden the Bosch Active Line Plus up some pretty steep hills in the past, and it did a great job. Maximum support of 250% for this, since it's a hub system, whereas you would get 270% for the derailleur equipped bikes. Coming back to the display here, uh, I have it set to show me the remaining range. And that's why it, there's just that little dash right there because I have it off, so I have you know infinite range now. If I bump that on up to Eco, then you'll see that range estimator change 90 miles. I've got almost a full charge right now. So if you're riding an Eco super efficient drive system, you can get up to 90 miles on that, and they're really accurate too with their range estimates. They've done a good job with that. If we bump that all the way up to Turbo, then that will update and like, oh, you've got 34 miles. So you're talking, you know, 35 to 90 mile range, depending on your assist level. That's pretty dang awesome. And then you could get the uh, the range extender option on here too. If you want to get that, then they get, uh, there's like this special bracket that puts on right here. And then it mounts onto these bottle cage bosses here, a Bosch Power Pack 500. That would double your capacity. So you'd be talking, <laughs> what's that, like 70 to 180 mile range. That's some serious range. I don't know if you would you know, necessarily want to ride that far. You, you, you could, the saddle's certainly comfortable enough. These these from Celle Royale, the, it's the Lore Gel saddle. Really wide, really, it's, it's super soft, this gel. Like this thing is really, really nice to ride on. So anyways, coming back on up here to, to the control system, that's really all there is to it is just changing your support levels. And then if you wanted to turn your lights off, you can do that by holding down plus. I will turn those off. I'm gonna turn it back on though. Good thing for safety just to go ahead and leave them on and then to change the display you hold down the minus here and so now it just says off that's just showing the assist level i can switch it over to the current trip six miles or the total on the bike of 81 and then one last time will get us back to that range estimator which is where i typically like to leave it that way i can just always see how much range i've got left I've got a flick bell up here of course you need to let anybody know that you're you're coming up on them. And I think I mentioned before, you can turn the bike on and off from the battery here. Just press that button. Uh, I didn't actually press it. There we go. Uh, nope. This is kind of difficult with gloves on. And it's off. Uh, it's not a very, it's kind of a frustrating button because there's there's not really tactile feedback to it. You just gotta kind of press firmly on it and uh, did the display come on? Nope, let's try it again a little bit more firmly. Nope. Oh, there we go. Now, <laughs> so yeah, it's there's probably some improvement that could be done on the button here, but is it worth it? You know, you can turn it on and off from the display. So 
that's what I would always do is just go from the display there. All right, well, enough talk. Uh, you know, let's take it for a ride. I'm gonna ride it over just all the dirt and there's some, some ice on the ground over there. It'd be nice and bumpy. That way you can see how much the bike does not rattle. Like it, they did a really good job. So let's, uh, let's go for it. So we've got it turned on already. I'm just gonna leave it off for now so I can ride it around like a bike, talk about that a little bit, and shift that down to one. So easy to mount and dismount thanks to the step-through frame here. Now this is a medium frame bike, the 53 centimeter, I think it is. So it's a bit small for me, you know, it's the bike they had available, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, check out just how, let's switch hands here, just how, how smooth it is. No, no real rattle, rattle coming from the fenders up there. See if I can manage not to wipe out on any of this ice here. Yeah, really, really solid job for the whole experience. Nice and smooth. It is a, a little bit bumpy just in terms of rider comfort on here. You know, I can, I can feel the suspension working, but it is fairly basic. The seat post in particular, this style, can kind of stick a little bit. Like you, you it'll, you'll bounce down and it can kind of stick down. That happens a bit more in cold weather. And you know, like I said, I haven't really properly gotten it tuned up for myself yet. So you know, keep that in mind. Now that we're on the flat trail here, you can hear just how smooth it is. I mean, just, oh, fantastic job. Gazelle's just Gazelle's craftsmanship with their bicycles is and honestly it makes them one of my favorites that I've ridden. Now that we're you know on the smooth trail here, it's just super smooth, super quiet. Belt drive is almost silent. I mean, honestly, I can hear anything coming from down there. Really fantastic job on there. We're gonna do a little uphill climb here so that we can. Uh, show off a little bit of the motor power. I haven't even like turned on the electric assist yet, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll bump it up to say tour. So we got a, a decent hill coming up here. It's not uh, super steep, but I am going to leave this down, uh, just leaving it in tour. I'm in gear three right now out of eight. So pretty easy pedaling. I think I will, you know, shift that down to maybe two. This is not uh, not an ideal riding position for me since I'm, I'm really tall. I'm six foot three, so this is definitely a bit too small of a bike for my size. But even with that, I'm able to get up this hill without any problem. For here in a gear two, and just still in tour. So I didn't even have to like bump that up to turbo or shift all the way down. So it's you know like I said, I think it's got plenty of power for most folks. We're gonna ride uh, over that way. There's a a little bit steeper hill we can try it out on. Gonna bump this back down, turn it off again, and just do a little bit more riding unassisted so we can you know, take a look at the, the shifter here, kind of try that out. It's uh, the effective range, it's, it's like a, an 11 to 36 tooth cassette, so if you're shifted all the way down into one there, nice, uh, nice fast cadence for riding at lower speeds. Now I mentioned that you, you kind of want to shift while you're not pedaling, right? When you're at these lower, like lower speeds here, you can you can shift it while you're pedaling and it'll do pretty good. But then once you kind of start getting up there a bit more, you start to kind of hear some plunking. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, it's really more just like kind of protecting your system that you don't want to put too much wear on it. So ease up on the pedals when you shift. We're all the way up here in eight right now. We'll get shift it back down. Now I've already mentioned the sturdiness on the frame here. Uh, really, like they just do an awesome job. For a step through frame, it's normally a little bit harder to like ride no handed, especially at lower speeds. You'll get a lot more wobble on it. And I mean, it's like, it's doing great. Feels really nice and stable. I'm only, you know, only going like 11, 11-ish 11 miles per hour here. Really solid. And I've got a huge backpack with a ton of crap in it that's certainly not helping me out here. So 
really good job on these and riding it unassisted like we are it's not too hard to you know get up to 15 to 20 miles per hour if you're you know, wanting to get a little bit of exercise but then i'm not feeling quite that motivated so let's go ahead and turn that up to say tour actually what we'll do i'm gonna shift this down to say two so we can kind of get the cadence going a bit more and then shift this up to turbo I just want to show you the motor and kind of demo the volume of it for you it's it's a nice perk of these active line plus motors is that they're they're really pretty quiet like the, most people aren't going to be able to hear it as you're going by so we got it turbo the highest setting here Not a whole lot to hear there. And if you can hear it, you can hear just the, the responsiveness of it kicks in the instant I start pedaling. And then as soon as I stop, the motor shuts off. Really, really nice. It, it just, it feels good. It feels instantly responsive. Now you're, it's not gonna feel as nice if you are you know really riding at a high cadence getting up to you know if you go past that 105 rpm you're going to exceed what the motor can do now it's supposed to just you know let you pedal on your own after that but sometimes they can be i don't know it'll, you can you can like feel the motor kind of struggling once you pass that limit let's see if we can kind of hit that Well, no, actually, that was like super smooth. I uh, didn't didn't feel anything wonky at all. We're we're getting going nice and fast here too, so we can do while we're coasting just shift that all the way up to eight and then start pedaling. So we're we're pedaling way beyond the motor's max level here. We're going 24 miles an hour, and the motor can go only up to 20 since this is a class one electric bike. No throttle, top speed of 20 miles per hour gonna turn around here and head back to that hill get that shifted back down so yeah I, I do want to call that out on on the motor here previous versions of the active line plus motor when you pedaled past the motors max assist it, it wasn't exactly a drag it was just it was kind of hard to describe you could it felt like there was like a little bit of drag or resistance or just something wasn't quite happy because you were you know pedaling so much faster than the motor could handle. So this feels a lot better. It feels really smooth. I didn't notice, you know, any difference as I went past that 20 mile per hour marker. We're gonna head back up that hill that we just came down. See what the motor can do climbing up that. We'll shift uh, all the way down into first. We got it in turbo. Eh, what the heck, let's put it in like third for now. Get us started here. When you have it in turbo, very easy to start out and get pedaling. I mean, we're already we're already cruising up there at almost 15. All right, so we got it in fourth out of eight. And just to see if we can, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the hill no-handed here. Pretty steep hill, it's a short hill, right? So not gonna have to ride for super long. So definitely slowing down a little bit here. I'm gonna you know, put a little bit more effort into it. Oh, watch out for the ice. And boom, like we're we're already at the top of it here. I'm not really putting a whole lot in. Like I'm just cruising along no-handed, not getting out of breath. So it's, I mean, it is more than sufficient for, I mean, I, I would say, you know, 90% of riding conditions if you live in a city. All right, we're gonna bomb back down this hill and see how fast we can get going here. See how it feels at, you know, higher speeds so we can like break 30 or so. Well, we got it in four here. That's good enough to get started. So here's where we cross that limit. So now the motor is stopped and hard to hear at this speed, but it's not making a, you know any sound back there. So we hit, you know, 28 coming down that hill. Feels rock solid stable even at those higher speeds. We're going to loop around here and head back over to the bike path.
I don't know if you could hear that loud clunk and rattle, but I just tried to downshift a bunch of gears while I was pedaling and it kind of got hung up there. It didn't kick in until I stopped pedaling. So, you know, like I said, it just takes some time to get used to. I'm so used to riding derailleur systems that this feels kind of funky to me. So where we're at right now, this is what I would consider kind of an ideal riding situation for this bike, right? I'm, I'm riding on a bike path. Fort Collins is great because they've got tons of bike paths all over the place. It's very easy to get around without really having to worry about traffic. Pretty smooth as well. You know, there's some occasional cracks and bumps that you come to that you know, are no problem for the suspension that we've got on here. So, you know, not any huge potholes, no off-roading. It's, it's a really comfortable riding experience. It's, you know, let me try to extend out here. Nice, kind of upright, pretty upright seating position. I am a little big for the bike, so keep that in mind, but it feels really nice. Um, Gazelle des describes the seating position for it as active, which, you know, typically means like kind of lean forward a little bit more, but that's really up to you as the rider because you can adjust that stem you know, a bit more forward, a little bit more active. You can lift it up a bit more like I've got it and sit up a little bit more, which I prefer. I find it just a little bit easier on my back and neck. And it just, it feels great cruising around on these trails here. I just got it in Eco right now, so I can, I mean, I can't even hear the motor when I'm moving at this speed. It feels, it feels really nice. Let's uh, kind of kick it up to turbo a bit and Get a little bit more speed going here. Uh, this is a, a pretty fun trail here. Kind of winds around next to the creek. Some interesting, uh, they kind of like a, it's almost like a concert stage kind of a thing set up over here. Not getting a whole lot of use lately, as you can imagine. But I think it really speaks to how well built the bike is that. I feel comfortable, you know, taking these some of these sharper corners and just zipping around like this with just one hand. Now, granted, I am a, a fairly experienced rider, but this feels a lot better than on a lot of other bikes that I've ridden, you know, electric or standard. The brakes feel satisfying, super good stopping power, even, you know, just stopping with one hand. Ooh. Got some ice there. Hey, even, you know, even just stopping with one hand, do a little, little brake test. They're nice and quiet. They're well tuned, of course. I mean, Gazelle is always great about making sure these bikes are perfectly tuned, ready to rock and roll before they give them to us for reviews. But having those hydraulic disc brakes really helps to add to confidence while you're riding. That if you do need to stop quickly, you'll be able to. The belt drive does make a kind of a rattling sound when you stop pedaling. Here, I'll see if I can give you a listen to it. Uh, and that's nothing to worry about with it. That's just part of the normal operation for it when you stop pedaling and the belt still, you know, cycles forward just a little bit. Uh, if you haven't ridden one before though, and, and you hear that, yeah, don't worry. It's it's all doing what it's supposed to do. Found us a little bit of bumpy trail action just so we can do a little bit of off-roading. We got like some mixed terrain and mud here. And uh, well, I mean, it's no mountain bike. It's not it's not super comfy on it, but you know, it can handle it. These are really good hybrid tires. They're very smooth and polished. In, in the center for good rolling efficiency, but then the as you get closer to the outside of the tire, it's a lot, a lot rougher. It's got a lot more traction with the diamond patterns on it. So, you know, even though it's really bumpy out here, still very quiet riding experience, right? I'm not hearing any, you know, rattling, bumping, clinking, anything like that. That could change if you have stuff on your rear rack that can bounce around, but the bike itself does solid. And riding on this dirt road, it's a little bit less comfortable. I can feel a little bit of vibration in the handlebars as I'm going over all these little rocks and stuff, but it's still doable. You wouldn't want to do this for like a, you know, a long range ride on this kind of terrain probably, but I don't, I don't think that's really what the bike is, you know, intended for. Really good coverage from the fenders. Not getting hit with any, you know, dirt or water or anything like that from all the 
mud and pet puddles that I've been going through throughout the course of the ride. So yeah, that does a solid job. You know, even though, even on these bigger bumps and potholes, I'm still over to do it easy enough on one hand, but all right, got you set up so you can see uh, third person. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Thanks for coming along on the review. If you've got questions or comments on it, you can chime in in the comments section right here on YouTube. You can also catch us back on electricbikereview.com where you'll find not only the full written review, we've got all the specs, the weights of the components, measurements for like the length, width, standover height, you name it. We've also got a forum for Gazelle riders back there where you can connect with other riders. If you've got questions that you wanna ask Gazelle owners, you can do that there. You know, we do our best on these reviews, but we only get to hang on to the bike for a little while while we do the review. So if you really want that in-depth owner experience, someone who's ridden hundreds of miles, maybe owned the bike for several years, want to hear how it holds up, that is the place to do it. I do want to say thanks to Tina and Shane with Gazelle for hooking me up with this bike for the review. All right, guys, thanks for coming along. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.